Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 10 in the series of 15 videos on the topic of work time problems. Work time problems, 10th one in the series of 15, and today is our lesson number 135 problem for today is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that we have three people, A, B and C. A can do a job we are told in 10 hours. B can do the same job we are told in 12 hours. C can do the same job in 15 hours. The question is very simple, very straightforward. How long will it take them if they were to work together at their constant paces? I'll give you five seconds. I want you to pause the video. I want you to solve the problem yourself and then resume the video. I'll give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Do the problem yourself first and then we'll do it together, okay? Alright. There are two ways of going about this problem. One way is to do this problem in a conventional way, orthodox way, classical way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, the mathematical way. Other way is the quick and dirty way. The quick and dirty way is where the quick and dirty way is where we ask ourselves. We, the quick and dirty way is where we say to ourselves that before we do any work at all, before we invest any time in this problem at all, let's first look at any answer choice that's, that is simply nonsensical, that is simply silly. For example here we are told that C takes 15 hours to do a job. If C takes 15 hours, if A and B, listen very carefully, I'm not going to write everything down, if A, well, if, if A, if a and B were to work, were to work as slow as C, if A and B were to work as slow as C does, as C does, we need a verb here, if, if A and B were to work as slow as C does, well C takes 15 hours. If B also takes 15 hours and A also takes 15 hours, then in, in five hours, listen carefully, in five hours C can do one third of a job, B would be able to do one third of a job in five hours, and A can do one third of a job in five hours, which means working together, all of them, the very most that they can take is something less than five hours. Why something less than five hours? Because five hours is how long it would have taken them had everybody been working as slow as guy C. But A and B are not working as slow as C. It cannot possibly take them five hours or more. If you find any answer choice that's five hours or more, it's nonsensical. It cannot answer choice cannot be five or six. Now the exact opposite ex exact opposite logic will apply if if B and C if B and C were to work as as fast as fast as A does. If B and C were to work as fast as A does, well A can do the job in 10 hours. If A can do the job in 10 hours, and if B can do the job in 10 hours, and if C can do the job in 10 hours, working together, they will take 10 and a third hours. Because in 10 and third hours, A will do one third of a job, B will do one third of a job, C will do one third of a job, job will be done. 10 and one third is 3 and one third. The job cannot possibly take less than or equal to three and one third of an hour because everybody is not working as fast as A. It will be, the answer answer has to be more than three and one third. But well, there is three hours. That's, that's, that's silly. That's just silly. It makes no sense. Answer has to be either B or C. Answer will have to be either B or C. Let's do the work now. All of these things that we just did here in the real exam, you should be able to do this in the matter of, in a matter of five to ten seconds. That's it. It should not take any more than that. Take the highest number and take a third of it. It cannot take more than five hours. It cannot le take less than ten and ten and a third, uh, ten thirds, which is three and one third, three and one third and five. So th the amount of time that they will take has to be more than three and one third, and it cannot possibly be more than five. Correct answer, whatever it is, correct answer, whatever it is, has to fall in this range. Five comes from a third of a fifteen, and three and one third comes from a third of a ten. Knock out all the answer choices that fall outside this range. And in most cases, you'll be able to narrow down the answer choices to two, two, two options. Sometimes you can even knock down four answer choices, in which case you're done. Let's do it together. Now, 
the key here, the key here for, for the key here is for us to be able to come up with a number. The smaller, the better. The smallest possible number that we can find, which is a multiple, which is a nice multiple of 10, 12, and 15, which is called the smallest possible number that is a nice, uh, that's a multiple of 10, 12, and 15. Instead of saying in such a verbose way, usually is referred to as the least common multiplier. And this is how we find it: 10, 12, and 15. Find, find something that is a common factor of at least two of these. We can divide these by two, this becomes five, and this becomes six, and this is still 15. Again, we see five, we see 15, let's divide by five. Five becomes one, six remains six, and this remains three. There you go, we are done. Two times five is 10, and six times three is, something has gone wrong, five. We divide it by two, I'm getting 180. 180. No. Oh, we can go one more round, you see? The way the way it stands right now, six times nine, six times nine is eighteen. And two times five is ten. Ten times eighteen would be one eighty. Which I knew is not right because I can I can tell we don't have to do all of this work. Just by visual inspection we should be able to tell the sixty will do the job nicely. Sixty is ten times six, five times six, or sorry, rather five times twelve and 4 times 15, 4 times 15, 5 times 12, 6 times 10, 10, 60 is a nice multiple of all of these numbers. And I knew that all along, before, even before I began the job, even before I began this work here, so when I came up with 180, it didn't seem right. And the reason why it's 180 is because we can go one more round. We can, this is 6 and this is 3, they have a common factor of 3. We can go one more round, 6 is going to become 2 and this becomes 1. There you go. So now we have 6 times 2 which is 3, 3 times 2, 3 times 2 which is 6 and 2 times 5 which is 10 and 10 times 6 is 60. I'm making too much fuss about it. The least common multiplier is 60. The least common multiplier is 60. That is our magic number. We're going to now ask ourselves how much, uh, how much work each one of these person can do if they are given 60 hours. Given 60 hours, A can do a can do, well because it takes 10 hours for him to do a job, A can do, A should be able to do 6 jobs in 60 hours. B should be able to do, because it takes him 12, 12 hours to do a job, give them 60 hours and he can do 5 jobs. C takes 15 hours, well if C takes 15 hours to do the job, if you give him 60 hours, he can do 4 jobs in 60 hours. We're almost done. So 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15. So we have 15 jobs. They can do together they can do 15 jobs in 60 hours. Together they can do 15 jobs in 60 hours. Well if they can do 15 jobs in 60 hours, if you ask them to do just one job, one job should take the 15th of the amount of time. 16 divided, 60 divided by 15 is 4. The answer is 4. They can do the job together, working together. They can knock it off in mere 4 hours. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.